The judge in the New York fraud trial of Donald J. Trump says he wants all $454 million plus interest right now. And Letitia James, the attorney general of the state of New York, says if he doesn't get that money, she's going to start seizing Trump's properties. Look, guys, we're in an all-new America. Okay, This ain't the America you grew up in. This is the America where if you have the wrong political opinions, uh, the state, capital S, can come down on you like a ton of bricks. Trump's properties could be seized if the $454 million civil fraud debt is not paid, warns Letitia James, the Attorney General of New York. Donald Trump could be at risk of losing some of his prized properties if he cannot pay his staggering New York civil fraud penalty with interest. Check this out. With interest, he owes the state nearly $454 million and the amount is going up $87,502 each day until he pays. New York Attorney General Letitia James told ABC News on Tuesday that she will seek to seize some of the former president's assets if he's unable to cover the bill from, ju from Judge Arthur Ingeron's February 16th ruling. Okay, so this is where we are, guys. Now, let's go back because we did a video on this. The judge, Letitia James, they don't know a hill of beans about real estate investment. The bank that Trump got financing from, Deutsche Bank, had absolutely no problem with the way he structured the deal. In fact, the bank lowered his net worth from what Trump stated. The bank came in and said, now we believe it's this. We're going to lower it. They, all, they cut it in half and still loaned him the money. Why'd they do that? Because they had such a phenomenal track record of making money with Donald Trump. For God's sakes, he's got, what, 50 years experience in real estate investing? So the bank said, hey, this is a good bet. We're going to go with the winner. We're going to go with, uh, you know, where we've succeeded before. But you've got two bureaucrats, Judge Ingeron and uh, Letitia James, who's a politician, more so than a bureaucrat. But the combination is devastating if it uh, is concerning your private property. I had a college professor at one point who also was a state senator here in Maryland. And he would, al he would always say, anytime the legislature is in session, your life, liberty, and property are at risk. Now, this, didn't, this ruling didn't, result as, uh, didn't come as a result of you know, a legislative session per se, but we do have legislators uh, who are gleeful about this. We've got an elected official, high-ranking Letitia James, who uh, pursued Donald Trump, who made it a point to say before she got elected, if you put me in office, I'm going to get him. Now, imagine having that said about you. We're going to let we're going to bring to bear the power of the state of New York to get an individual. And you have a mob cheering that. Guys, we got to be careful. We got to take some of the personality out of this and slow this game down because where we're going is not pretty. And all you need to do is read the history to find out exactly what the destination is if we keep pursuing these kinds of routes. If he does not have the funds to pay off the judgment, then we will seek judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets, according to Letitia James. Trump's ability to pay his mounting legal debts is increasingly murky after back-to-back -back courtroom losses. Of course, we know in January, a jury convicted him, or ordered him to pay, rather, $83.3 million for defaming E. Jean Carroll. Trump claimed last year that he has about $400 million in cash. Uh, those are his cash reserves, and they'd be eaten up, you know, and then some by this judgment. Now, look, guys, Trump is a billionaire, but he doesn't have a billion dollars laying around. He's got a lot of property that has um, appreciated over time, and that constitutes a lot of his net worth. Another aspect of his net worth are the incomes that are derived in the form of... Uh, 
when people pay to stay at his hotels or when people rent his properties or when he outright sells those properties uh, to someone in the form of, you know, just straight up a real estate sale. Now, guys, Trump does have the right to appeal. Uh, and he has promised to do just that in both the E. Jean Carroll and this case, uh, the fraud case. Uh, if he files that appeal, it's unlikely he'll have to pay the penalty or face the prospect of having some of his assets seized, at least for a while. Unless that appeals court comes back and says, yeah, you got to pay this. We're going to uphold it. I don't know if the Supreme Court would take this on. If he wins, though, of course, he might not have to pay a darn thing. So this is going to be a protracted legal battle. What you're seeing from Letitia James is uh, grandstanding because she promised to get him. Okay, so she's doing these media appearances like the one she did on ABC uh, here recently. She's doing that because she wants the airtime. She wants to, you know, because this is going to be front page news. Now, he appeals, he wins. That's going to be on page two. Okay, Letitia James won't have anything to say about that at all. Uh, because then she will have her campaign promise will have fizzled. Okay, but she can always say, I got him. It was those those judges, they were wrong on the appeals court and they let him go. Listen, guys, this is very serious. As I always tell you, if they can do it, forget the fact that he's rich. If they can do this to the president of the United States of America, because they don't understand they they legitimately do not understand how real estate investment works. So they took that and ran with it, right? If they can do that to a president of the United States, the smallest fraternity in the world, right? The most powerful person on the earth. It looks like he's going to occupy, he's got a good chance of, uh, you know, taking that position back again. If they can do that to them, God help us, right? God help us, because we don't have those kinds of resources. They could just swoop in and do whatever they want. Now, there is a way to minimize the chances of that happening. How do we do that? Well, we get the hell out of places like New York and California, okay? And we look at these deep blue states and the mentality that permeates the legislatures in those states, the courts in those states, the bureaucracies in those states, and we say... We got to get out of here. We got to go somewhere where our money and our liberty is respected. And they're not going to come after me simply because we don't agree ideologically. All right. So, um, look, I think this is good for the red states. OK, because people want at the end of the day, they want liberty, financial and otherwise. Speaking of tyrants, we've got the mayor of Dalton, Illinois. This woman would be some sort of African dictator who would cut your limbs off if uh, you looked at her the wrong way or she thought you did. Tiffany Henyard, she is a corrupt politician through and through, allegedly. Check out this video, guys. Learn more about her. This is the kind of hood rat you got to look out for. They come in all shapes and sizes. If you see this taking power in your city or state, it's time to get the hell out of there. Guys, I'll talk to you soon.